mayor of Suazwa, which is the, the hometown he is from. <laughs> but we have it over here, and we have Capitancito. Also, two legend players. We love to see him. Also, a clash of countries. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's the beautiful thing about S plus tier tournaments like S Factor 11. But you really see the best from all over the world come on at it. And here, already getting things started. That fire breath, one of the tools in the matchup, can knock away that that remote bomb, but doesn't do too much more. Bowser can sometimes struggle to get in, but right now, making short work of it, even still, one over is going to push you into the corner against Capitan Cito. That's right where he wants you, and Bowser is a big body that struggles to get away. Yeah, and you know, this much of this exactly the patience exactly. you would like to have, but look at that. Not saving your jump is also an act of patience, and we can see it over here. Uh, Capitan Cito taking the first talk with that nerf, and, you know, one of probably the best aerials. And you saw the mayor of Swaswa, right, nod his head as he, <laughs> as he let that one get away from him. And now Capitan Cito pushing you close to close, getting the read on the overextension. And you can start to see that this matchup, this onslaught is starting to get to him a little bit. Bowser player nodding his head, smirking. You start to see the frustration because Capitan Cito has been hit once this entire stock. And that's going to be Bowser's gone again. There is no way to get away from this knee. I don't think Bowser's the answer. <laughs> no, it's probably not. And, and, I, and I'm pretty sure Perito P already knows that. Uh, as, as you can see, in the player camp, I, I told you before, he's a genuine actor. <laughs> he's pretty much that it. Um, and I'm pretty surprised that they both agreed to start uh, a battle. You know, not just two. Yeah, I mean, listen, if, if you can get there, especially if you fix in bands, why not? They probably RPS for it before the set. And Capitan Cito loves this stage, right? That's not there. He's so good to cover the platform. Bowser can do so as well. And having those extra ramp landing routes in, on, in most matchups is really good for him. So I understand why he likes this stage to do. But if you're if you're or Capitan Cito, it gives, makes it so easy for you to push your opponent to the ledge once they're there, as we see, right? Bowser just can't get away. Yeah, exactly. The thing about Bowser is, yeah, he has like, Super fast aerials, but the hurtbox is not helping at all. That's why this matchup is probably not that good. And I'm pretty sure we are about to see a game I'm going to change if this doesn't go better for Poyta Pio. Well, even still, though, he's starting to build this one all the way back in. Beautiful coverage there with the missile, but it's not going to be enough. And that Bowser side special giving you a hug in the belly flop. To not going to quite find the stop just yet, but copying on Cedar knows he's at the end of the road and needs to find something here. Going to do so, it looked like he was out of iframes at the end. Pull it to the there, right? You saw maybe air dodge or jump, and it just conserved his momentum into the blast zone. But if you're Capitan Cito, you take those two stock in solid fashion, and if you're his opponent, you need an answer and fast. Yeah, he, as you were saying, he was like finding the answers at the end. He was like taking almost the last stock. But I'm pretty sure he will do, or he will try better with Game & Watch. Uh, maybe a change of pace, you know, playing the slow game. The slow game we, not all of us like, but I mean, the optimal thing at, at the end of the day. And you know, it's notable as well, right? We did see that, that forward air from Bowser put in a lot of work, not hitting Capitan Cito, but hitting that bomb, right? Hitting that down special right back at Capitan Cito, changing that ownership over and causing him a pr him, him to have a, a projectile of his own to deal with, right? That covers that really awkward angle. It doesn't just go horizontal, it goes up at a slight angle. So you can't even sh jump away. You have to full commit to get away from it. And then Bowser gets to control all that space for free. So great job from Polito Pio, using the tools to at his disposal, the situational awareness to find the mileage he could. It just wasn't enough. And oh. even though he adapted, even though you know it didn't feel like there were more adjustments to make, He's sticking with it, moving over to PS2 for game number two. All right, the main, the, the main thing to do at this point, right? You know, changing spaces, as you, as you said before. Maybe this platform, like not being that close to the ledge, might help for you to be able to get back. And you know, trying another one of two things. I think uh, we could kill, kill uh, Capitan Cito just once with the side, you know? And uh, I think, ooh, watch, so watch the bomb position, right? Puts you right over that platform. You have to burn your double jump. You're gonna get back down. It's a beautiful, beautiful position for Capitan Cito to have his opponent in. And with a stage as wide as this one, right? Can just run away, play that zoning game if he really wants to. The issue here isn't even the platform, it's just in general the positioning. And when Capitan Cito gets it unlocked, for Polito to get away, but in turn two, 
holding the internal edges of these platforms, trying to force Happy Nancito to commit to either a grounded or jump-based approach. But because of those projectiles, because of those missiles, it doesn't have the effect it wants, and he still can't get away. Yeah, he, he, he thought uh, Happy Nancito was going to ledge. Maybe that's the reason behind that backer, but you know, you can't. You can hit that charge shot with the backer at this, that point. Oh, so what you can hit at this moment is a roll. I roll read with the pair. And, you know, it's going back to two yeah. Better than four. People forget, right? You just can't cross up Bowser. That forward air ends below him and hits just about vertically underneath. I like the attempt to get away, but once again, that get up attack gonna push that bomb still into you. Bowser's just so incredibly big here, Davo. And we're seeing it time and time again. Now the high platform's a juggle. He still can't get away. Has to commit, but that's what Capitan Sita wants. Pushing you to ledge the up special chase. He's pulling out all the stops to lock, put on the pressure right now. You know, I was saying something about the low game, but Capitan Sita is not making it look like it is low. This game right now, we have the bomb again. You know, but not for dash attack. You know, good range, good power. Maybe a little bit slow, but a great tool in this matchup. Wow, and finding that late nair down to get in and get the drag down, that's not entirely true, but even still, it's a great juggle position, especially with these high platforms. Utilizing hit stun, right? Says, hey, projectile puts you in so much, I can find another one on the follow up, pushing you to the corner time and time again. And the largest F smash in the game, that button is huge, Davo. And. I mean, when you combine the huge hitbox with huge Bowser, it doesn't matter how big the stage is. There is no getting away. Yeah, ain't no getting away. And, um, you know, I at this moment, I think the only smash we haven't seen from, from Capitan Zito is the up smash, which is also a really good smash attack. He's been using down smash. Both games ended with smashes. One with the down smash, and the other one, last one, with the forward smash. Maybe we can find Capitan Zito ending the last game with an up smash. Hey, maybe. I mean, certainly maybe, especially if we see a big stage or a stage with, you know, a center platform, right? We see potentially a Bastion or we see a Smashville, right? Those or Tunnel City, any of those could give you oh. so much, but there it is. Finally, we talked about it before. We didn't even expect to see one game, let alone two, but here you go. And on Final Destination, how do you feel about this counter? Um, I'm pretty sure he's for, like, anyone, to be honest, because you know, the the way Migoner is just facing like everyone, every, every single option of Puerto Pio, it's been insane. But Puerto Pio can also make this like fair for him. Getting all these, uh, yeah, exactly, taking the chaff, getting all these projectiles with the down B, and all that might be the answer that Puerto Pio is looking for. Right now. You don't have a lot of room to work with. Remember, even if you make this game, Capitan Zeta still has two more to adjust, get to put you in a corner, but that bucket is just going to be such an incredibly useful tool. It means that you have to respect these bomb hunting these missiles both, and, and everything else because all of those projectiles, if they explode, add energy. If they don't explode, they just get reflected on back. And it's so terrifying. Remember, those smash attacks, some of those other explosions, aren't energy at all. They're just hitboxes. Yeah, and, and remember, Game & Watch can just uh, stop their own beat. Wait. The bucket. And that's something especially um, annoying, as I would say, for the Game and & Game and Watch matchup. And, you know, he's trying it. He started better than before, even winning, but at this point, anyone can take it just with that downfield by Captain Cito. Yeah, Cito is a cool call out there, but now getting put in an awkward situation, especially against Game & Watch. Here is so good at ledge guarding. It's dead. Polito Opio opting for that ledge trap and going out there, but too late on the commitment, right? Allows Copy Nancy to use the jump, get the up special back on stage, and try and get away. But even still, he has been locked on. Not a single hit, finally getting one. And at 170, any extra credit is so incredibly helpful for Copy Nancy. At this moment, still living, by the way. Okay, trying to get the, the smash read. Not getting it, and you know, that's something uh, Big Hunter has a good combo. Ooh, trying to, yeah, fishing, fishing for the charge shot. Maybe just trying to get uh, the bucket out of the way. And there it is. Okay, right now, look at the cover. And we're seeing this from Capitan Zito a lot. He's throwing some of these projectiles out really aggressively because regardless of which one they are, the end lag is so low that he's able to jump in and say, okay, you bucketed me from mid-stage. I can jump in with that neutral air, right? Find a hit pressure you to the corner again. Now up three stocks to one, surviving at 175. And while Meat Gunner's got a little bit of weight to him, I mean, he's not a heavy by any stretch. This is an absurd percent to be living in. Yeah, I mean, she is technically the 
heavyweight of the means, <laughs> but still, yeah, nothing compared to like Bowser. This is a zero to death combo to end things off. There was nowhere to get away. You saw at the end, Bullet Pio, the mayor of Swaswa, right, trying to find an answer, trying to find any hit, but that's sometimes where they get you, right? When you stop playing that measured game, when you start saying, oh my god, I gotta find this stock now or else, what do I do? Capitan Cito capitalizes, locks it down, locks it out, and takes that. Again, just what a way to end the set on a zero to death on Final Destination. And it's, re it's really showing you the, the dominance mm -hmm. Capitan Cito was showing, because from the second stock to the third stock, he only got like 50%? Yeah, like 50. Yeah. He took 50 the first stock, right? Got, you know, didn't, you know, and, and we saw Polito Pio living, right? Really doing a great job, playing great defense on that second stock. It was 30 seconds or so before he got hit, but he couldn't find that hit either. And it doesn't matter how well you live, how will you avoid the extra credit if you can't close out the stock on your opponent. Just like it doesn't matter how long you live at high percent if you can't hit your opponent. At the end of the day, it was Capitan Cito who figured it out first and yeah. never gave Polito Pio a chance to recover after that. Exactly. A little bit sad for Polito Pio, but you know, these people coming to win. And this is what Capitan Cito is doing by this way. You know, just getting the projection right. And um, as I said to you before, um, I'm not pretty sure if it counts as a smash because it was an up tilt. But you know, he killed it with a up move. So yeah, we got, we got, got yeah, we got game one, he went down. Game two, he went sideways. Game three, he went up. All the cardinal directions of Smash Bros. The only thing he didn't find a way to end the game with was a neutral move. But when you only got three to work with, there's only so much you can work with. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because, but talking about what we can work with, I think I saw Super Dog going up to stage. So I think we can see how Mario. Wow, Mario is a character that has had such an ebb and flow, right, throughout Ultimate's lifespan. Started off incredibly hot in the meta, players like Dark Wizzy, right, we know, taking dominance and here, there, and everywhere. Then kind of went away for a little while before Karama and Wizzy had a resurgence. And then it was just Karama, and now we've seen other player players, right, left, right, and center, just showing off with this character, showing you not only does this character have an absurd neutral game, but also the combo -o game and the defense, right? People don't talk enough about Mario's defense, his ability between Cape, Flood, to slow down the pace of the game. That back air being minus 3 on field, minus 2 on field. So incredibly safe and so incredibly fast that not only does this character have the ability